K, we're live on Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> I know you'd like to do a few more emails, Suzanne. No, 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 I was getting Caroline. Oh, hello, Caroline. Hello, hello. He forgot hello. about you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we're all live. We're ready to go. Yeah, we're live. We have a fabulous new product today, a supplement you are going to love. <laughs> I hope we have enough of them. And here she is. Suzanne Summers. Oh, you got right to the introduction. I'm, we I'm wearing my glasses because they're my brand new sunglasses, and I love them. They're just so darn cool. I know. They're like yeah. movie star glasses. Absolutely. And I like to take pictures like that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh. Anyway, I'll take them off. That's a lot of picture. I'm not Al Hamill. Hi, everyone. Well, today is a very exciting day. It's uh, all about your hair. And and combing your hair. And I asked Caroline if this comb was a gift, and she said, no, we sell it. And I said, how much is it? And she said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we do bundles, we'll uh -huh. often include it as a gift. But uh -huh. today is a discount on the entire website, so you get to pick whatever you like from what Suzanne's talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm going to go through it because you all get upset when I talk too much and tell stories and don't tell you what the deal is today. How much off, Al? Uh, it's 25% off site-wide. Uh -huh. Okay. And the promo code is NOFRIZZ25. NOFRIZZ. I'm going to have to show you that because that's not the way I would spell frizz, but that's the way it's spelled here. How's it spelled? F-R-I-Z-Z. -Z. So oh. it's N-O-F-R-I-Z-Z-25. And how would you spell it? Yeah. F-R-I-Z. That's kind of like a guy's name. Hey, Frizz, come over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll just put my glasses on for another couple of minutes because they're I so cute. Fritz. I dated a Fritz in college before I dated your son. You did? Well, in fact, I was going to a formal with Fritz. I had invited Fritz uh -huh. to kind of a hard to get an invite to formal, and I happened to be one of the members of this. It was a drinking club, if you must know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Bruce, Bruce, who was my very good friend, who's like one of my best friends, came to me and he said, "You need to take me to Ace of Clubs." And I said, "Well, I'm already taking your fraternity brother, Fritz." And he goes, "Don't take him." <laughs> you should take me. So, and I was like, uh, I mean, he is, he was kind of not the greatest to me. And he goes, yeah, so just tell him that you don't want to go with him. And, and you and I can go. Well, it's so much fun. And so we did. <laughs> but we weren't dating. We just went as friends. And uh, Bruce actually had kind of a bad flu, but he just sucked it up and pretended yeah. that he didn't because he didn't want to wreck the night with me. You know, um, when when uh, I first met you at Bruce's birthday party that I gave for him at Trader Vic's in San Francisco, because I wanted to know who his friends were. When your kids go away to college, you don't know who they're hanging out with. And um, so I, I asked um, a, a friend of his who was a relative of ours indirectly, who is he hanging out with? And she gave me the guest list. And in walks Caroline. And I could, she, she just caught my eye. And I could tell she really liked Bruce. So after the party, I said, you know, Bruce, that Caroline girl, wow, she's got such a personality. And he said, yeah, but she'd never go out with me. I said, are you kidding? And uh, so who knows? Maybe I was the impetus behind him saying, take me to the party instead. Who knows? Yeah, that was like, you actually... Or that actually it pivoted with you. That was the year before that I took him to the party. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I knew you yeah. two were very good friends. That's a nice yeah. way to start a relationship is very good friends. It is. Yeah. It is. Anyway. Well, that's how we started our relationship. Anyway, how, how about... We were good friends. No, we weren't. Yes, we were. I was a good friend of yours. No. <laughs> weren't you a good friend of mine? You were all lust. Well, not all. Yeah, not all. All. No, I thought, oh, this. Yeah, she'd be a good friend. Yeah, right, right. With benefits. <laughs> 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 he took me out to dinner and only ordered a souffle. And a bottle of champagne. And a bottle of champagne. I went. Is this like really cool or really? Let's get it over with. 
<laughs> so we have Sandy ben Bendahan watching uh -huh. from Kelowna, British Columbia. Oh. She says, love you beautiful people. We love British Columbia. Yeah, I do too. And every summer we spend uh, about a week, maybe a little less than a week, on an island in British Columbia that belongs to a dear friend of ours. And it's amazing. The I mean, we see whales, we see those giant uh, farting. Uh, Are you talking about us? Yeah. Oh, I thought she had written this and I thought, no. maybe she goes to the same island of no, the no, same she's, friend. She's in Kelowna. Oh, she went know, to Kelowna. Kelowna. Ba, 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 da, da, da. Yeah, that's, where I, that's where I shot my uh, talk show in Vancouver. In Kelowna? Not in I thought Kelowna. it was Burnaby. In, well, Burnaby, yeah. Well, m most people don't know Burnaby. That's where Michael Bublé is from. I know. The irony of Michael Bublé, you know, the fabulous singer, is that um, evidently his father was at one of my shows in Vegas. And unbeknownst to me, and, unbe and I didn't really know who Michael Bublé was at the time, I called his father up on stage to sing It Had to Be You to him. And so then at one of the Oscar parties, this is so inside Hollywood, Michael Bublé was there and he said, you got to meet my father. He said, you called him up on stage. I went, oh my God. So anyway. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. well, okay. Yes. Yeah. Something else about okay. Michael Bublé's father. Okay. I had him on my talk show. Why? I can't remember. He was in the audience. Same thing? Pardon? Same thing? You called him up? I called him up and we had we were doing a little playing a little game this. and he won and I gave him a pair of pants. Ah, and I gave him a kiss. There you go. There you go. What are the odds? What are the odds? Michael Bublé's father and we both uh, uh, without having any idea prior. That's right. Well, it's that interesting. Well, Michael's a great guy. And I was talking to David Foster recently, who's the great Canadian um, he, well, we all claim him now, but he was, he hailed from Canada and he just, he really discovered Michael He came Bublé. from British Columbia, by yeah. the way. He really discovered Michael Bublé. Michael Bublé was singing, singing, singing all little places, but it was David Foster that saw in him the potential. I was talking to David Foster the other day and I said, well, Michael Bublé is so great. And he said, yeah, and he has no competition. There's nobody his age out there singing that genre of music, and I said I'd never thought about that, but that's right. So, little, okay, so what do you got here? Uh, what I got? Okay, hair, skin, and nails supplement. Uh, I swear by it. Alan swears by it. Caroline swears by it. We'll all swear later on. We, we're saving the swearing for later on in the show. The hair rescue mask. Once a week, like it or not, take 20 minutes. Put the wash your hair. Uh, put put the conditioner on it, and then put. Uh, like a handful of this and run it through your hair, especially at the ends. Leave it on 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, maybe even an hour if you really, if you have the time. But this way, 10 minutes, you can stay in the shower, rinse it out. You won't believe how great your hair looks. Uh, this is yeah, activating serum. Oh, activating serum. I can't live without activating serum. Activating yep. serum. I use it every day. Uh, it's meadow foam seed oil and takuma oil. You don't have any of that at home, do you? No. I do. Yeah. And um, this, is the no, this is your no frizz friend. His friend. No, no frizz, frizz friend. No frizz. Oh, no frizz friend. No frizz friend. Oh, that was a long time ago. I lost my train of thought. Activating serum. You wash your hair, you condition it, you come out, you towel dry it. Then you take about eight squirts in your palm of your hand and do this and then pull it all the way through. Now dry your hair any way you want. I use 12 squirts. Okay, I use uh, actually 18. And then I, I use the styling here. gel. All right, can we just slow down? Okay. That's coming. The activating serum, pull it through, and then just haphazardly blow dry your hair. Then take your flattening iron and flatten, and it goes smooth like silk. It's magic. I've given it to people who cannot believe it. So I had one woman... Ellie, uh, can you hold that label up when she's talking about each product so that people know which one to order? Certainly. I've got a lot of questions. About I that. cannot live without activating serum. It's that great. I Could that be my favorite of all our products? It's hard to get favorite because they're all great, but this is way up there, just like I am with my mother. <laughs> I, it, is, it is a game changer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, Suzanne wears her hair straight. I wear my hair sometimes curly and sometimes straight. So today in the after show, I'm going to show you how I do one side curly and one side straight, which oh. might, not be the best, oh. might not be the best after shot, but I want you to see how 
how well it works on both styles of hair because really it's about getting rid of the frizz. In our granddaughter Daisy, who has that fabulous flopsy mopsy hair, the most incredible curls, but she says she can't get the curls the right way unless she washes conditions and then puts activating serum and pulls it through and then just does this until it's dry. Oh, God, her, her hair is my favorite hair. Oh, wow, it's so beautiful. All right, the next is activating gloss. Show them this. Ooh, sorry. Finishing gloss. Finishing, finishing gloss. And um, so, you know, I get little split ends on the top here. You just, after you wash dry and activating serum and flat iron, then you just take a few drops, not a lot, of finishing gloss and just kind of do that to take away the frizzies. And it also gives you like a beautiful high shine. Shine, yep. Yeah. Then, I have like one drop in my palm throughout my, and that's for me as enough. You have a lot of hair. Yeah. But I never, I don't think I use more than three drops. This will last you a long, long time. Now give this back, yeah, all right, okay. And then the next thing is the hair paste. You know when you do your bangs? It's called styling cream. That's styling cream. When you um, want to piece your bangs, I did it today. I pieced my bangs together like this. It's that paste. It's perfect. It's um, it's perfect. It's a great hair reshaper. Behave, Alan. <laughs> don't do that. Well, you have to show the stuff. Yeah, no, you don't. You don't. No, you, no one would ever use that much. Okay. Here, let me show them. Right, right, Caroline. Oh. You use a tiny bit of product. I know. And you, uh, you wanted to do Al Hamill bad. Stuff. No, I just wanted to show the product. Okay, okay. I'm trying to be, you know, a good <laughs> Vanna White. This is as much as you would use, and you're a good. You're you're better than good. It is a great product for guys, Randall. Randall is asking if guys can use the style. You, it's Al really, uses it's it. It's really great for short hair. Yeah. Um, but, for and bangs. Hair and controlling hair. And bangs. It allows. You yeah, and it allows you to, like, if you sleep on your hair and it's kind of funny and you don't want to wash it that day, you can you can reshape with this product. I highly recommend. It will last you a year. I don't, no, I don't want to say that. It lasts me a year. Well, like, Jill uses that every day because she has that, like, fabulous spiky short hair. Right. And, like, that's her favorite hair product. Yeah, so great. Okay, great. Alan. Yeah. Styling gel. He okay. already told you after the activating serum, he uses yep. styling gel. Yeah. Show them the styling gel. It's like great to put at the roots to get a little lift. It's great to like do PC things. What do you use it for, Alan? To style my hair. And uh, I either I either have a straight hair that goes all the way back. Or I have my natural curly hair. Your hair, I love your haircut right now. Okay, thank it's you. very cute. Do you know how many people are telling you how great you look? It's your really? hair. Yeah. You know, hair is, hair is a, a, a beauty a make or breaker. And then the last but not least, our brand new supplement, ashwagandha. Um, do you know, it, it's a great supplement for stress. Do you know that we experience more stress in one day in our present day lives than the people of Elizabethan times used, had in their entire life? That's how stressful everything is. And stress is so dangerous. It's dangerous for your health in every way. I can go through every organ in your body and just tell you stress is bad for that, stress is bad for that. If you're not sleeping, you, it's because you're stressed, you've got anxiety, all these things that... Um, it, it, it does you no good. Um, I always love the phrase, worry, remember this, worry is a prayer for what you don't want. I didn't make that up. I read it in a book called The Secret many, many years ago, and I just, every time I start to worry about anything, I say to myself, worry is a prayer for what I don't want. And um, when you worry, all you do is is upset your, your body on every level, and you don't ever get to have peace. You want to have peace in your life. You know, what's going to happen tomorrow doesn't affect today. Anyway, ashwagandha uh, helps regulate your cortisol levels. Cortisol is your stress level. Um, cortisol, uh, it, in Elizabethan times, again, I'm going to go back there. If you were being chased 
by a saber-toothed tiger. Where would you get the get up and go to get out of the way? It's cortisol. You've heard of um, women who are able to lift a car off of a child if it's been run over. That's because their cortisol kicked in. That it's, it's, it's for moments of intense stress. That's what our cortisol levels are about. But we allow ourselves to live in such a stressful uh, environment at all times that your cortisol never goes down. If your cortisol never goes down, you notice you don't sleep very well. How about this? Belly fat. Belly fat is as a result of, of when your cortisol is all crazy, then you um, crave sugar and donuts and, and bad things. And you get that belly fat. Uh, stress eating, right? Stress, the reason they call it stress eating. Stress eating. And um, memory, remember, you can't, uh, can't remember things so well. Ashwagandha helps with your cortisone, cortisol levels. It helps with um, your belly fat, I was going to say belly fart issues, belly fat issues. Belly, and belly <laughs> farts. I think memory as well. Mm -hmm. Right, Caroline? Yes, and I mean, listen, as Suzanne explained, cortisol, our stress hormone is responsible for so many things that ail us. One of them is that when we're stressed, we tend to overeat because your body's looking for something to fill to, to calm yeah. that stress. Take the Usually pain that's away. Sugar or carbs. Yeah. Yeah. So that belly fat. So you know, ashwagandha helps control your cortisol level, and high cortisol is what causes belly fat. So that's a great that's a great addition. It also just makes you feel better if you're someone who is experiencing stress. That lowering your hormone cortisol which is your stress hormone that helps you to feel better and they've done so many good studies on ashwagandha so many good clinical studies that it's a supplement that's like really trending right now because of all these clinical studies and you know you can take other medications when you're super stressed to try to get those levels down but they often give you brain fog or they make you sleepy and ashwagandha you know again here's suzanne with a natural alternative for you but Best of all, do you have shedding hair? It helps with uh, hair shedding. So it's kind of a cool, throw it in with all your rest of your supplements. It's co cool, it's new, it's cutting edge. It's um, just coming out on the market. People are just jazzed about ashwagandha. So yeah, here, you, you know, again, it's like when you have those high, this happened to me a couple of years ago. My cortisol levels were very high. My father was dying and we were in a very difficult business situation and I couldn't figure out why my hair was falling out. Like and not not hair falling out like if you have you know male pattern baldness or alopecia, it's it's not that kind of hair shedding. But if you have very high cortisol levels and they stay high throughout the day, which is not the natural state. If you find when you're combing your hair after your shower or bath that you're ending up with a wad of hair that is due to cortisol levels. So again, how do you help control the cortisol? You take the ashwagandha. Um, and for me, when I took the ashwagandha and got my cortisol levels, my hair stopped shedding. So that, all right, so that's the whole thing. And there's this comb that we don't know how much it is. <laughs> it's $4,000. It's a nice comb, I like it. Like when your hair is wet, but I don't know. Caroline doesn't know the price and I don't know the price. Aren't we great salespeople here? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, yeah, you mentioned uh, you know when you're stressed out and sugar. You mentioned donuts, and I remember uh, when I had a donut in years and years. Well, Dick Clark bought a whole bunch of those donut franchises. Oh yeah, Krispy Kreme, right? Was it Krispy Kreme? Yeah, yeah. Right, right. And I'd never. I was very stressful driving past a. Um, a strip mall where they had a Krispy Kreme place. I went in and I bought a dozen donuts. And between San Diego and Malibu, I ate them all. How'd you feel after that? Uh, I, I, well, I can't remember how I, I don't know if I felt badly. I'm sure you were bloated. Uh, that could be. I'm sure you were There's constipated. Like that you don't even feel it. Yeah, right. Right. Constipated? Yeah. But you have, um, you, you're addictive that way. If you start eating something you really like, you can't stop. I feel that way about people, too. Yeah. But you're so thin. Come show them how cute you are. 
Film? Yeah. Hey, the comb is 10 bucks, guys, Nine ninety nine. I would pay that for this comb. This is a good comb. I keep it in my bathtub, and I use it every time comb I, when I put my hair. conditioner in, I comb my hair through with it. Doesn't need you know, I wear a few hats on the <laughs> steel, okay? I operate the cameras. Mm -hmm. I operate the lights. Okay? You're, you're just a handy guy to have around. I turn up when she pulls the chain, mm -hmm. okay? And now I'm actually going to give her a little combing here in the back. Because it feels way, good, yeah. This is not the first time I've done this. No, he does it a lot. I Sometimes actually, he dries, he flatten irons the back of my that's hair. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. You're the perfect husband. I do it all. Yeah. Well, maybe not. I did a long interview I with E today. Most. And I mentioned how great you are. Well, thank you. Because you are. Thank you. I think thank you're you. great, too. Why don't you comb my back, too, where that itch is? Oh. This is a good back... Oh, You know, yeah. it, the last year... Yeah. Okay. Where I had the she surgery. She has me scratch her back. Oh, yeah. And this, this actually and has... on the other side now. He knows exactly where to go. Yeah. On the other side. Uh, this is actually uh, replaced foreplay. Okay? <laughs> yeah, so you do this to me and I'll do anything When she you. says scratch my back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. All right. You, oh, those were your hands. not even okay. the comb. Yeah, when I had... Uh, look how cute he is. <laughs> and by the way, I'm not thin. Okay. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Even your daughter said that the other day. Daddy's so thin. Daddy's so thin. It sounds like a book title. Yeah. Or a TV Daddy's show. Daddy's Gone a Hunting. Did I do a movie called Daddy's Gone a Hunting? I can't remember. You've done so many movies. I've never seen it. I've seen a couple, but I've not seen many. Oh, that's the one where you in the uh, cemetery. Mm -hmm. It was your scene was in the cemetery. With those people who were really famous. That was famous. a famous director. I can't remember his yeah, name. Yeah, Hal Ashby, yeah, wasn't Hal it? Hal Ashby. Hal Ashby. Oh, it's very good. And Ruth, the old lady, Ruth. Oh, great. Let's hope she's not watching. <laughs> I'm sure Ruth she's not alive old, anymore because she was lady. old then. But oh. she was very famous and a really great actress. And um, I played an actress in the movie doing a commercial standing in a cemetery. This is the roles I used to get. Okay. Yeah. Well, I did a commercial in the, uh, what was that show? The biggest show on television. Uh, All in the Family. All in the Family. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. enjoyed that day. I enjoyed that show. Working Man. With, with those people. That's what I forgot to tell. The, the E! interviewer today said, is there a sitcom that you, uh, is there a show that you would get you back to television? I said, oh, I would love to finish Chrissy Snow. She was wiped off the airwaves way too soon to me because I was developing this character. And I saw in my mind's eye that I would like her to go where Edith Bunker went. And we'd be different ages. But remember, we knew when you would just feel so awful if Edith Bunker's feelings were hurt. She had a full, a full personality that I, I was looking forward to doing. And so that would get me back to television. Okay. Okay, so... And Archie. Archie was great. Could you play Archie? No. No. I couldn't play Archie. No. I remember when you were on The Tonight Show one night, and uh, Archie, Archie, what was his name? Carol O'Connor. Carol O'Connor was there. Yeah. And I think he'd he had been, been drinking. He'd been drinking. Mm -hmm. And he reached over and grabbed one of your you-know-whats. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. Well, what can you do? I was, yeah, today I go... Actually, what you should have done is... <laughs> Grabbed him by the Wuga. That's not my style, but I would have today. Ashwagandha. And no one would do that because I, I wouldn't. But I was so young. I was in my 20s and I went, <laughs> and pushed him away. On camera. Yeah. Yeah. It was on camera. I wonder if that's on YouTube. I should look it up. They will. <laughs> they will. Now, you're all going to your cell okay. phones right now. Um, you guys, the Ashwagandha is thirty nine ninety nine. Um, and then you add the 25% off discount code, which is no frizz 25 And so you're going to take $12 off that price. So it's down it's to great. $28. It's and you great. take two a day on an empty stomach, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Empty well, stomach. I'll take one right now. Why not? Oh, I know. You're going to ask me that. And I just asked Jason to put it on the homepage so it be featured and easy for you guys to find. Yeah, you open it. He's my bottle opener also. Yeah, thank you. 
He's handy, that out. He Cute, is. Trim and he handy. Is. And he makes breakfast. Oh, oh yeah, this morning. Fresh does, blueberry yeah. pancakes. Yeah, he made great pancakes. With but eggs. They were really left over from when you were here the other day, but they were still great. Mmm. Mm. What? Mm. I just had ashwagandha with a gut renew coffee smoothie. Okay. Gut renew. And top of the morning, too. Uh, yeah. I got all my drinks going on here. There you go, honey. Yeah. Um, we're having a great dinner tonight. What are you having? We're having a steamed little neck clams and a great yeah. butter, lemon, garlic, um, white wine sauce with um, sourdough. Uh, garlic toast to dip into it and and for dessert ashwagandha <laughs> <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like a dessert right yeah it does uh, I'll just, just a small a, a small scoop of ashwagandha yeah. yeah yeah well I think you should take the, I should put this in your in with your vitamins too okay like, uh, I'm in stop. I like all are the you having any you hair shedding me. pardon are you having any hair shedding I shed my hair uh, when you were sick. Yeah. And I'm sure it was because my cortisol levels were high. That is. Exactly. That's right. And, and, uh, you know, I, yeah, and, and you can use Suzanne's hair, skin, and nail supplement to help regrow hair and to help strengthen hair, yeah. skin, and nails. Here's your, but to stop the shedding, you need to get your cortisol levels. So here's shed. your recipe that's here. We, that's why we added the ashwagandha. Here's hair, skin, and nails. Here's ashwagandha. This is your recipe for um, uh, shedding and growth. It's pretty great. And nail growth. My nails are growing. They were I was losing nails for a while, but they're coming back. So glad about so, that. Yeah. Darlene Reneker yeah. says I still eat eggs in a nest twice a week. Oh, remember that? Oh, so you've been with us a long time, Darlene. Yeah, I haven't done my that nest for a the, long time. Why don't you do that tomorrow morning? I'd love that. Fried yeah. eggs and onion nests. Wow. I also like that was so good. Eggy in the basket. No, nowhere near as good as the nest. The well, nest is it, crunchy different. and sweet and yeah, it's different. different. Eggy in the basket is bread. It's French toast with an egg in it. Yeah. French, yeah. great French I don't toast. I had the pancakes this morning because they were irresistible, but I don't like having French toast or pancakes and things like that in the morning. I just think it's a... a Bad way to start the day with all those carbs. Sure, no, you I say don't eat, I don't need many carbs. You didn't carbs. say it when I put it in front of you, No, no, you, no, they you? were too good. There's, they okay. were irresistible. And you didn't I'm say, it, you didn't oh, say it when I said, get... would you like some more? Okay, you didn't say it then either, did you? Okay? So now you're saying you've inha you inhaled all the blueberry <laughs> pancakes. <laughs> you went on and on and how great they were. And the best <laughs> egg you've ever, best egg you've yeah. ever had. Okay? Sure. And now, now you've got yeah, buyer's, like buyer's remorse. <laughs> well, I don't think it's, no. it's not the right thing to eat first thing in the morning. Why not? Yeah, and I always hear my mother talking about the poor, starving ch children in Europe, the depression mothers. Oh, How many yeah. of your mothers talked about the depression? That's why we only had a half a cube of butter. I grew up. One of the first things that one of the first adult things I did when I lived on my own was I put a whole cube of butter on the table on the butter dish. My mother would always cut it in half lengthwise and fold up the other half. I go, why? She goes, because you, you it's it's all about your eyes and you see the whole cube, you'll eat you'll eat twice as much. And she's probably kind of right. The the uh, parents of the Depression era uh, learned to be frugal in a way that's ad admirable today because people are not frugal. Maybe we will be. <clears throat> There's a lot of doom and gloom coming, they say. Oh, say, by the way, uh -huh. Eve Connolly says, Al sounds like a great cook. Well, I have to tell you something. I'm not bragging, okay? But in the 70s, I was uh, involved uh, doing commercials, TV and radio spots, for a national, voice. A national um, grocery store chain, a chain. And I was doing a lot of cooking then, and so one day we were talking about it, and they said, why don't you do a cookbook? And so I did oh, a cookbook. Do we have that here? Pardon me? Do we have it in the I, you can probably, It's probably on one of those sites, it's eBay with all or my something. Cookbooks. Alan Hamill Cooks. Yeah. That was a great book. Well, it was a simple book. Yeah. 
okay? Because I'm just a simple person. And it had very simple recipes in there. You're just a simple person. I'm a simple guy, mm -hmm. yeah. I have very few big needs, okay? Actually, in a way, you are. Yeah. You're, um, it's, it's an admirable quality of yours. What is? I'd like that to hear it. You don't it. need to impress anybody. Like, we have a 12-year-old car, and he just had it all redone. He treats his car <clears throat> the way I write about to treat your body. You know, uh, what I was saying in this interview today was that aging is about worn out parts, things you all know from me. And that you, in today's world, if you're in the know, you get to replace what is worn out. Your hormones, your nutrients, your minerals, just like if you had a great car, like Alan has a great car. He listens and when the car says, uh, the brakes, uh, I, my brakes are sore. So he goes and gets new brakes. Oh, my tires need changing. So he gets new tires. So we've, in this last year, redone our our um, our 12-year-old Cadillac Escalade. And it's, it's, I love the car. I don't, it's a great car. But, you know, most men need the new whatever. Well, you know, you we, used, we used to lease two cars a year for years. Yeah. And it was based upon, well, you know, it's the business and part of it's the business and you can write off a part, blah, blah, etc. I didn't think about it, okay? And then one day I thought, I turned in the three cars after the third year and one car uh, had, I don't know, 10 or 15,000 miles on it. The other car had hardly anything on it because we used one car. Yeah. So. And I don't really drive. So, that's when I... won't let me go anywhere by myself. That's, well, Actually, why would you, why would you want to go anywhere really without me? Okay? I don't want why, to go okay. anywhere by myself. Anyway, you interrupted me. I was talking about my car. Okay, where was Tell I? Tell me about your car. car. Okay. So, anyway, you I decided, you, you know what? Them and you didn't I decided, want you know what? It's stupid yeah. to keep leasing cars. So, I'm going to buy this Cadillac SUV, the extended ago. one. Yeah. Okay, I bought it. You know what? It's 12 years later. It's I'm nice so glad car. I made that decision. It's nice inside. It's comfy. It's beautiful. I, I love our car. Now we're going to take a nice long drive through the southwestern part of this country. When are we going to do that, Al? Well, what are you doing after the show? <laughs> I, I love the, the southwestern yeah. part of this country, yes. While well, you're telling that story, uh, we have a friend who would, named Bobby, who would really love to see the size of the pill on ashwagandha. Would you mind opening that? Yes. The size of the what? The pill? She wants to see the size of the pill. It's a small pill. Yeah. It's, not, one of yeah, it's, it's not a big one. Here's the top of the styling gel. It doesn't even fill it. Hold it up, Belle. Put it on top of the styling gel. Uh, That's yeah. even better. I think it's going to fall. Let's Let turn see. it sideways. Okay. Right. There we go. Okay. It's, mag it's also magnetic. No, it's okay. not. No, it's not. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's an easy one to get down. Yeah. I have... Um, you could actually... Stick that up your nose. Yeah, isn't that fun? I have... Um, nose Waganda. A, a <laughs> <laughs> I take Nose Waganda all the time. I have um, a couple of supplements that we make that aren't capsule, that are rough. And because I broke my neck, wow, is it tough to get rough stuff down my throat. And I'm now used to, when you get it stuck... Have you ever taken a supplement and it goes down sideways? That's what seems to happen here. It goes down sideways and then you ugh, try to get it up. But anyway, it got stuck today and I got it out, which is a good thing. Um, hey, if you guys went on to SuzanneSummers.com and you saw that ashwagandha was sold out, it is not sold out. Um, it was just the page just needed to be refreshed. So it, it, we put it right on the home page to make it easy for you to find it. I'm so glad so many of you are jumping in. Clearly, it's struck a chord. Well, oh, belly God. fat... And hair shedding stri strikes big chords. <laughs> oh, and the belly like fat is different belly fat than having gut issues, you know, which is uh, remedied with the uh, uh, or supported with gut renew. But um, belly fat is another phenomenon. It's usually stress eating. Oh. Also, this I just happen to have it on my desk here. He's never without it. Okay, this is this is great. <laughs> It this is. is really a great product. It is. You know why okay. I put it there? Because it's right near your coffee machine. And so you can just pour water in your coffee machine and we can have uh, gentle colon renew easily at night. 
With coffee? See, no. Is there coffee in your coffee machine or when? With hot water. Yeah. Yeah, with hot water. I could do it with hot water. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying. A fizzy, yeah. a fizzy lemon thing. Yeah. And then you don't have to walk all that way to the kitchen. It must take two minutes to get to the kitchen. Well, it's a I don't long like walk, to waste and at night time. it's cold, isn't it? And then Gloria follows me, okay, mm -hmm. and then I can't get her to come back into the bedroom. Which is not terrible. No, okay. But then you have to leave the door open. Yeah, but if she's she, if she's outside conscious. the door, if she's outside the door, then we have to listen to her moaning. What does she say? <laughs> no, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. No, no. He's no. You're making up Gloria sounds. Here's what she sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's another animal that you used to know that I'd never know. Gloria goes, ow, ow. <laughs> okay, I'm coming, ow, I'm coming. Ow, I'm coming. Ow, okay. <laughs> ow. I go, your cat calls you by name. You're right. <laughs> You're right. And then you feel, you hear that on the door. Have you noticed she doesn't call you by name? No. Okay. But she says hello in the morning. I go, good morning, Gloria. And you know what and she it goes, is? Ah. I feed her. I change her water. <laughs> I comb her. Okay. Uh, remember Barry came over one night and he was depressed and I said, what's wrong? He said, oh, I just found out because he had these dogs he's just so into. He said, it's all about the food. I said, what do you think is about you? He goes, no, it's all about the food. Yep. It's not though. Our no. cat loves us, doesn't she? Well, she loves me. And he, she loves me. She guards me. Everywhere I go, she yeah. follows me and guards me. Well, especially me. when you go to the toilet. Yeah. She loves, she loves coming to the toilet with she, me. She comes in and because rubs her tail. In, rubs her tail against my knees so that I'll pet her back and pull her tail. She and you can do it because pull. you're good at multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> you can do both at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so Tinsel... Tinsel Crystal on Instagram says yeah. you can get a pill crusher at the drugstore. Really? A pill crusher? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some, of the, I mean, some of them taste worse than others, but yeah, you can crush your Is that like a, a mortar? Like a mortar? Yeah, it's like a little, it's like a little mini, it's a, it crushes the, so if they're tablets. You know what, that's a good idea. Well, you know, Dick Van Dyke puts all the, everything yeah, except, everything nice. except yeah. his, uh, yeah. His fish oil, he puts it all in a, a pestle and he takes the mortar or whatever you call it. I have it. no tr trouble with uh, capsules at all that go right down. It's the rough ones that I think it's psychological too because I think, oh, this going to be hard. I get it in there and then it gets stuck sideways. Oh, that's such an unpleasant experience. There are worse things in life, but it's pretty bad. Yeah, I know. I didn't know there was a, a pill crusher. Yeah. Yeah, like well, you that, can't put oil... In, uh, th those are fine. Those are nice big capsules. Yeah. Well, no, no, you're right. I, I, I hate it when one of those pills turns sideways. Yeah. And it's stuck in your throat. Okay. That happened to a guy I know um, with Viagra. It got stuck in his neck. His Viagra? That's not what it's for, is it? No. <laughs> Do you want to know what's in hair, skin, and nails? I want to, I, I want to get pay, I won't pay off this story. You oh. can make up your own ending. Oh, is there a payoff, or are you just like setting us up with no payoff? Well, you have to think about a guy who took Viagra for one thing, and the pillow got stuck in his neck. That's my husband. I married the, that guy. Okay, in the hair, skin, and nails... Biotin is in there, and everybody in the beauty business is talking about biotin as a beauty nutrient. These hair, skin, and nails has, so you get an optimal amount, and but it's more than just biotin. We've got bioactive collagen peptides. Peptides are the best word. We have solid, soluble keratin complex. Keratin is what makes up hair, and silicon. So it helps support healthy nails, skin's elasticity, appearance of skin. Contains keratin, zinc, vitamins B3, B5, B6, copper, helps support the top layer of your skin, improves um, hair brightness and luster. So that's a great supplement. It's a great supplement. And if, you guys are, if you've seen other hair, skin, and nail supplements, you know, Suzanne's got 2,500 micrograms of biotin, but all those other nutrients. 
So again, she just always goes the extra mile and loads it up for you. So you've got collagen already in there. You've got keratin and silicon on top of the biotin. It's such a good product. Okay, the mask, which I said, you know, put a, a scoop on it and put it through your just washed hair, has organic amino acids, which repairs split ends and improves elasticity and hair volume. You'd, you'd buy it just for that, right? But it also has sweet almond, coconut, and shea butter, which creates smooth, shiny, frizz-free hair. And in one application, you'll just see such a difference. <clears throat> the True Brazilian has absinian seed oil and meadow foam seed oil. And as I said before, I bet you don't have that around your house. Uh, if you have short hair, it's one to two pumps. Medium hair, three to four pumps. And long, thick hair, five to six. Hair like mine, I do eight. Sometimes I do 16. Uh, the finishing gloss has kapua seed oil from Brazil. We have kapua su and other things. You don't have any of that at home, but we bring it to you. And we're proud of using kapua su seed. Broccoli seed, argan, and tomato oils. Tomato oil. Oh, I love tomato oil. I use tomato oil for so many. You know, I wrecked up my hand the other day doing stupid stuff in my closet, and I paid the price for it. But anyway, the tomato oil... You can't believe how wrecked it was, and it's almost cleared up now, tomato oil. Uh, adds luster sheen, high shine, vitamins A, C, B1, B2, B3, plus nine antioxidants, creates manageable hair, repairs split ends, and helps deliver nutrients to damaged hair. And the good news about the finishing gloss is one to three drops, and it lasts forever. The True Brazilian, which is the one I can't live without, is absinian seed oil and, um, well, I just told you about that, the meadow foam seed oil and um, the volumizing hair styling cream uh, has beeswax, makai berry, which is a rich antioxidant superfood, cocoa butter, takuma, and meadow foam seed. There's the meadow foam seed again. Uh, Nutrient-rich moisture agents, pine rosin for shine en enhancement, makes your hair look amazing. And the styling gel uh, uh, contains xylitol from birch trees to help promote healthy scalp, completely gluten-free. Quinoa protein and xylitol. Quinoa has eight essential amino acids with film-forming properties. And xylitol is a naturally occurring sugar <coughs> alcohol from birch trees and promotes healthy hair and scalp. So now I've told you everything that's in it. And then the ashwagandha, we talked about belly fat. We talked about um, managing your cortisol. I, in Memor my books, memory and, is a big yeah, one. Yeah, memory. I'm going to get to memory. If you For those remember. of you who've read my books, <laughs> I, I bet I've written about the, the importance of keeping your cortisol levels intact I've written 27 books. I bet I've written about it in 27 books. It's that important. I always ask the doctors that I interview about cortisol. They all have something different to say. Take out one or two of my books and look, look up cortisol. But this is the first time we've had a supplement that helps uh, regulate your cortisol. Uh, I guess support is the word because the powers that be won't let me say it does. It supports. But I'm looking at my books over here. I'm in love with my book Breakthrough these days. I've been referring to my daughter. My granddaughter Daisy called me the other day and she said, Zanny, I have a UTI. What do I, what do, I do? And I said, D. Manos. D. Manos. Because Dr. Wright in the first chapter of Breakthrough talked about how D. Manos, we make it in our bodies, but then when we get our, the lining of our bladder gets irritated. This puts the sugar back in the lining of the bladder and calms everything down. There are just so many natural things. It's so great to first, yeah, I believe in allopathic medicine, meaning drug medicine. I needed them last year so bad. But when you can do it naturally, you're ahead of the game. If I didn't ever have to take a drug in my whole life, I prefer not to. But they're, when you need them, you need them, and they're a godsend. And I needed them last year. They were a godsend. But I've spent a lot of this year getting them out of me, getting this cleaning out my system. And I've been doing, uh, find, f uh, following all sorts of protocols. One of the protocols that I 
wrote about a knockout and breakthrough and uh, one of my other books, Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez. God, I love that man. He was murdered. Do you know anybody who was murdered? It's, it's an astounding thing to know. We someone. had a guy across the alley from us in Venice. We were living That's right. There. He was murdered. He was strangled. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a shocking, shocking thing. And uh, anyway, Nicholas Gonzalez um, was a cancer doctor, but my kind of cancer doctor, where he did not, he did not put you on any drugs. And he believed in cleaning out and detoxing and then feeding it with enzymes. Enzymes, pancreatic enzymes, are like little Pac-Men, and they eat cancer uh, and debris. Cancer is debris, toxins are debris. So I take those pancreatic enzymes every day because um, I figure whatever debris gets in me from toxins from the environment, I like to have them taken out of me. But there's some, in my books, there's some wonderful, wonderful cutting edge doctors. I, I've had such a privilege interviewing so many of them and getting to know them on such a, a profound level. It's really incredible. And um, what? No, no, I have, a, <clears throat> I have a note here from Cindy. Oh, what's Cindy want? She said, hi, we were just in Palm Springs. Have you ever been to the restaurant 849? Our waiter said, oh. quote, oh yeah, they've been in. She's doing great since getting divorced. Is there something you wanted to tell me? <laughs> First of all, yeah. It's a very nice restaurant. We've never We've been, been there, there once. We have? Everyone went once and we, uh, it's too far out of the way for us. It's a very nice restaurant. Very nice. But um, are you divorcing me? <laughs> well, no, no. You're the, no, no. She's doing great oh. <laughs> since getting divorced. Who would have ever thought that you and I would get a divorce? That's the last thing I would ever think of. The waiter. Attributed to us. Yeah, well, the, he didn't know what else to say. Well, maybe he, he's talking about another Suzanne. Is there another Suzanne we mm -hmm. know who got a divorce? There is no other Suzanne. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, that's true. There is no. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Other okay. Suzanne. Okay. Don't you love? I feel glasses? I have to applaud now. Yeah, I feel like aren't they beautiful? I saw them online and I went yes, and they weren't very expensive. Five thousand dollars. No. I think they're like 149, but I love them, and I love them so much that I'm keeping them in the case. I've got the case right there. I know, but you'll lose them either no. that or you'll sit on them. The no. Yeah, I no, sit you on will. these. You, will. you sat on these last night in the car. Yeah. Uh, so we buy 14 pairs of these at a time. We both have the same uh, reading. Three issues. three bucks a piece. And the 3.0, <laughs> three three dollar glasses. So he sat on it, and I went, oh, okay, throw those out. But these glasses, I'm going to keep in the case, and I'm going to take really good care of them. Yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that. I know that one. We watched a very interesting movie last night with Nicolas Cage about a 17-year-old a prostitute that was being hunted down by a sicko. And it's a true story. And it was called Frozen... Frozen something. Yeah, I can't remember. Because it was took place in Alaska. It was very good, but I still can't get over the movie we watched the other night. Which with, was? Uh, Ed Norton and De Niro. And yeah, Stone. That woman. What's that woman's I name? Know, She's incredible. The, I've never seen her before. Stone. Mila Djokovic. That's what I said. Isn't that Mila yeah. Djokovic? She's great. What's her name? Mila Djokovic. She's so great. She is. Djokovic she, is the tennis player. It's Djokovic. Jovanovich. Well, she gave Close not like not that they cared because they're both so 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 profound in their craft. But she gave De Niro and Ed Norton a run for their money. I I would watch that movie again, wouldn't you, Alan? I would. Let's do that tonight. We'll never find it again. Yeah, no, we've got a, we've got a t TV system here that. Oh, it's awful. It, if I had a gun, I'd shoot It's them. awful. It forces you to look at stuff people. you don't want Bam. to look at. That yeah. is that. Well, you know, Elvis, if he saw something on television he didn't like, he'd pull out his forty-five and mm -hmm. let the screen have it. You know, Linda Thompson, and then I've got, I've got to go because it's getting near the end of the show, but Linda Thompson is a great friend of mine, and she's had amazing loves in her life. She was um, Elvis's girlfriend for many, many years after Priscilla. She loved him. I can tell... She still loves him, but she loved him so much that when he became so hopelessly addicted to drugs, she said, 
I cannot be with you anymore. Imagine loving someone that much and not being able to stay. And, uh, and eventually, shortly after that, he did die of a drug overdose. Then she married um, Bruce Jenner. And uh, that was a very interesting story, which she has told, that she had her two babies with Bruce Jenner. And um, she, w she was, the, the second baby was just an infant. And she said, I am finally so happy. I love my husband. He's beautiful. And I've got my two beautiful sons. And the husband came in and told her that um, he uh, wanted to transition. And so they went to a therapist, and the therapist said, what I, before we start, I have to tell you that if, if you stay, you have to accept the fact that you'll be married to a woman. And she realized that she could not stay. You know, I, I'm, I'm all in favor of therapy, okay? Yeah. I've watched how much good it's done for, for you me, and the yeah. family, and even for me. The thing is that when people are deciding to get a divorce and they wind up going to a therapist. Yeah, to, but the therapist didn't say get a divorce, just accept the fact. No, no, but they go to they go to a therapist usually to see if there's a way to fix things. Yeah. Okay. And she said it this never, can't be fixed. It never this fixes is how he things. is. He I can't mean, I'd like to hear from one person who was going through a divorce. And she or he and their spouse went to a therapist. But don't you think this is a different circumstance? What is? And, uh, yeah, I mean, you can learn communication skills that help you to not hate have him. a better working relationship yeah. with your partner. Because Bruce and was now going to be her, her children's I understand that. mother. I understand This that. is all, all complicated. And then the next person that she married was David Foster. And she had a wonderful marriage with him. And then... That didn't work out for whatever reason. But I think, I remember the night I was watching Linda on Larry King, and um, it was Elvis's birthday. And he said, let me ask you, was Elvis the love of your life? And she said, yeah, he was. And I sat there and I thought, I, if I were David, I wouldn't be happy about that. And it didn't work out. So By anyway, the way, Laura Adams said, I saw your movie, No Laughing Matter, on Friday. Oh, That's I've where never you played, seen it. You played the alcoholic, right? Oh, that was a good movie, wasn't it? Well, where did I've, you see it? Can you never, write and tell we, me where you saw it? We never saw that movie. No. We never saw anything. No, I didn't know it was really good until Jerry Weintraub called one day. And he said, I was just watching your movie, No Laughing Matter. It was excellent. I... I enjoyed making that movie, No Laughing Matter, because I come from alcoholism. My father, my brother, my sister, my younger brother who died from it, my grandparents. I come from a long line of alcoholics. I, I you know, was very responsible for uh, starting the adult children of alcoholics movement as someone who I can have a drink, but I don't, I'm not powerless over it. I don't, when I leave all of you, I don't go have another one. Um, I decided to climb into the role of the alcoholic and I had a son in the movie and in that movie I would come home drunk every night like stumbling into the house and the son would be sitting in the dark looking outside and I would the next day I'd say tonight I'm going to be home for dinner I promise I promise I promise and the next scene you'd see that She's coming home late and stumbling in. The powerlessness of alcohol. That was revelatory and it gave me great compassion for alcoholics. I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I, you know, but I have great compassion for my father who I've totally forgiven because it must have been horrible for him in the morning to realize who he had been the night before. So no wonder he drank the next day. And for an alcoholic to have one drink, they can't. Like my sister who hasn't had a drink for 50 years, she, I said to her, Do you, could you ever have a glass of wine or anything? She said, no. Why? She said, because I, I wouldn't be able to stop. I, I, I drink until I passed out. So anyway, we're sent what we're sent in life to learn and grow and learn compassion and be grateful. Everything I know, everything I am is because of what I grew up with. And my beautiful mother uh, was the balance in my life. So... That's why it's important to know that it's not who you are. It's not what you do. It's not what you have. It's only about who you love. 
and who loves you. Good night.